Hello everybody, Andy here again. Well today I want to tell you a bit of a story, a story that comes out of a couple of conversations and that and messages that I've seen recently, mainly about Hastings Rock which I've just been involved with uh, over the past four or five yeah, weeks, years, whatever it might be. Um, but what it's about really is my sort of story that people on YouTube have been doing their YouTube stories but um, didn't really want to go down that road, done that before, been there, done that, and maybe moved along a bit. I've talked about Hastings Rock quite a lot on here before, but uh, for reasons that I may well come to later on if I remember, I wanted to say a little bit about my Hastings Rock story, because Hastings Rock all started way back in 1993, or at least that was the first broadcast, obviously it was thought about before that, and um, my involvement was wasn't there then. I had nothing to do with the station. I just happened to turn on my radio that particular August and found the station. I don't even really remember reading anything about it at all in the local press or anything. And I just discovered this station and I thought, oh, I like this sort of music. And it sort of took me back to the sort of 70s when I was a child or a, or a teenager, should I say. Listened to that sort of music and it reminded me of the radio stations of old, the sort of pirate stations and everything, the type of music that they were playing at the time. And what I did, I sort of listened and I kept listening and I enjoyed the way the, the, the DJs and that the DJs seemed to be sort of ordinary people, if you know what I mean. I knew it was a local radio station, knew where it was broadcasting from. So what I did, I sort of sat down and wrote a letter to the people at the station and sort of said how much I enjoyed it, how I'd stumbled across it, pretty much what I'd just said and my thoughts about it sounding like Radio Caroline from all those days gone by and those sort of stations that I listened to in my youth and it played that sort of music that I grew up listening to and and how much it appealed to me and, you know, basically saying on the end of the letter, you know, if I can help out in any way in the future, please let me know. Gave it no more thought, took the, took the uh, letter up there handed it in, and, and away I went. Um, I got a, a letter or whatever it was at some point, it, wasn't, it wouldn't have been an email, I don't expect. Um, the next time they came on the air, which was in 1995, in the April, I do believe, and I was asked if I wanted to loan some sort of CDs because they always needed CDs. That's where we were at that particular time. They needed to build up a library. So I went through and I gave, I think I ended up loaning about... Uh, 20 CD, something like that. nothing very special, but I got involved by answering a competition. I seem, seem to remember, I won a competition, so I went down to the studio to pick up my prize, talked to the main man as he was at the time and still is, Nick, and uh, got chatting to him about this and that. And I said, You know, if you need any more help, need any more CDs, whatever it might be in the future, please let me know. Sure enough, later on that year, they came back for another broadcast and to cut a long story short, I ended up loaning them about 200, 300 CDs, something silly like that, and became quite a major <laughs> player in the way of helping out with the music and, and donating the music. And also what happened on that particular uh, broadcast is that Nick, once again, the main man of the, of the station, um, happened to be on one Saturday night, I think, unexpectedly, and he happened to say he got no one to help him. So I rang him up as I'd had a couple of conversations, and I ended up going and helping him out helping out on the phones. And it, it went on from there. I, I ended up staying there uh, later that night and helping out the DJ after that as well. And this went on for a couple more broadcasts. I ended up sort of getting to know a few of the people within the station. And when it moved to its present sort of location now, I ended up helping other people out and I got to know people. And that led on to other things. And one of the particular DJs that I started helping out um, used to say, oh, Andy, you can do you read this out or something like you can you know, you know a bit about this. You can talk about this on air and this sort of stuff. I might do weather or whatever it was. I really can't remember. I'll talk about comp uh, competitions or read out people that have been r ringing in or little things like that, and um, putting me on the mic, which a lot of other people wouldn't have done. Maybe other people wouldn't have been happy to do. I don't know. Um, I'd always sort of harboured some let's say an ambition to become a DJ. It's one of those things that I always used to think, oh, I'd quite like to do that. Can't say it was in the you know, my involvement was anything to do with that. It wasn't. It was just purely because I like the station. I wanted to help out. And then when you get involved, you see how it works behind the scenes. You get to know the people and think, well, this guy's just the same as me type of thing. He just likes his music the same way that I do, etc. And you get to know a bit about it and you start to work and you think, oh, actually, I wouldn't mind giving that a go myself. 
I used to be like lots of other people, and I've discussed this with some of the people around the station, that in years gone by, I used to have my records as they were then, or even if it became CDs a bit later, and used to put them on, and used to sort of do that little commentary in between, as if you were a DJ on the radio that you used to listen to. Oh, I'm coming up at number so-and-so, it would be this particular track, and this track's off this album. All those sort of silly things that people do when they were a lot younger. Um, but... I was lucky in as much as I, ha I happened to get involved, I suppose, with some of the main players on the station. And it turned out that one, one evening I ended up, one of the guys that I helped out once again said, well, I'm going to do this little feature. I'm going to get listeners to put in their own songs and maybe just talk about their particular songs. And, you know, why would you want to fill an hour up? Why did you pick these particular songs? And I said, well, I'll give that a go. So he said, OK, you can be the first one. And I ended up writing, sorting out, producing that particular hour, I suppose. And then actually going up to the studio, uh, OK, the other guy did all the, the main presenting, he, he worked all the controls, but I did all the background, telling people why I picked those songs and picked out a certain thing. And at the end of that, the guy said, have you ever thought about doing some DJing in the past? And sort of in my head, I probably said something like, I never thought you'd ever ask, you know. <laughs> but I thought, well, yes, I'd love to. And... I ended up doing a particular show the next year or the next time that they were on and increased things as it's gone on. I was then asked to become more involved with the station as, as, as one of the committee members because my feelings about the station were very similar to the main people around the station and somebody had dropped out of the, uh, the committee which at that time only consisted of four people so to be invited in at that particular time I was, it was a great honour to me I suppose and well it was and it still is to be involved with it uh, and then I ended up taking over the local music show and everything like that and it went on and it went on and my involvement has got bigger and bigger I'm now the chairman of the station and I'm you know one of the sort of main DJs, I suppose, on the station. I, st I still don't class myself in the same category as some of the other guys that are there who've been doing this for, for years and years and years. But some of them sort of drifted into it as well in similar sort of ways that I did. They used to do mobile discos with their friends, as I used to do not that yet many years ago as well. So there's always been that love of music and that sort of uh, broadcasting type of thing, I suppose. And that was all before YouTube came along and that type of thing. But one of the reasons I mention this now is because I've had a couple of people sort of say to me, and you talk to people on, you know, around the station, uh, listeners to the station, fans of the station, when we have our sort of final night party and you have so many different conversations, they all tend to blend into one, I'm afraid, because you're dashing about doing your own things. But one particular conversation, I won't mention any names, someone said to me, I'd like to get more involved in this, someone who has helped out. And I sent them a message earlier on today, actually, and said, that's great, you know, you, know, you can help out as much as you like. So I think it's good to have people who want to get involved. You need the right type of people to get involved. That's not blowing my own trumpet, but some people wouldn't be as suited to it as others. And I found that with people who have helped out in the past or I've seen help out. Some work better than so you bounce off of people. That's that's what happens with me. I have a couple of or three people that help out of me and you with me and you sort of bounce off of each other and that's great and they, they know they know exactly what you want done, if you know what I mean. If you say, Well could you do that for yes they know exactly what they what you need. You need people like that. You need people who are willing to uh, get involved and to like being involved. That's what I like. I like to be around it the station I like to be involved with the station and that's what I notice about some of them, some of these other people and they're now asking me how do I get involved and all I would say it's very similar I put this at the end of the message I said don't forget that I started off by just loaning some CDs and then helping out somebody on the phones and if someone spots something there um, they will run with it but you've got to be willing to do it as well you need to be in the right place at the right time maybe you need to work with the right people as well but you need to put yourself out as well but it's the whole point of this video i suppose in some ways is that i started off as a humble listener i start then i sort of progressed one way or the other and by saying yes and by being in the right place but obviously by having the right thoughts, the right sort of ethos around the particular station because you don't want people coming in who are going to try and take over or move it in a different way. My feelings were the same as the bulk of the other people there and uh, that, that's good to know. So that helps and I know some of the people who've been asking me about this, their feelings are exactly the same as well and I think it's good, it's good to encourage people if people come forward, um, they put themselves forward, it's good to encourage them. You have to you have to put yourself out a little bit but I suppose the whole point of this is you might think that you are a listener or, or in any sphere you can 
you know, put this analogy to anything, I suppose, just because you're outside doesn't mean that you can't get inside. You have to make some sort of effort. You not insinuate your way. You have to do it for the right reasons, because I've seen people try and worm their way into things, and it doesn't work. People see that, and people spot that sort of flaw or whatever, and, uh, and you think, no, don't want them, because they're not the right sort of character that you want. You can see they might have an ulterior motive. There's nothing wrong with having an ambition. Don't go into something to change it completely. Yes, you might want to go in there and you can change. I've changed things within the sort of Hastings Rock thing, the way that it's done, hopefully for the better. I think the station's getting better and better, but I need, it's not all my thing. <laughs> you might plant that seed in someone. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. You can put your ideas in there. And there's nothing better in some ways than getting involved in something and actually seeing that you are having an effect on it, especially if it's something that you really like something that you really enjoy. There's nothing better actually being able to influence that in, a right, in the right way as well. As I said, taking it in the right direction, not trying to push it away to the side and change it completely, but just reinforce it and maybe make it better because we all have these ideas, we all need to get together. Sometimes bang a few heads together, throw these ideas out there. Um, but it's good that you have your ideas as well. So even if you've got any sort of situation like that where you think, I'd love to have a go at that, have a look around, there may well be that opportunity. Um, get yourself in there, put yourself forward, bring, make a few phone calls or something, go and help out. You won't get paid for it more than likely because I don't get paid for any of this as well. I do it purely for the love, purely for the enjoyment. Someone said to me when I was on the air the other day on the final night, um, one of the other DJs, one of my newer DJs, who's done exactly the same sort of thing as what I've done, who's came in by helping other people out. And because of his love of the music, he now is a DJ on the station and he will now be a regular DJ on the stage, someone who's got a lot better, no offence to him, he knows that, <laughs> I spoke to him about it the other day, he's getting that got a lot better himself, and he said to me, oh, you know, you know enjoying what you're doing, Andy, and this, he said, you know, you're nearly finished now, uh, what do you think, he's full of enthusiasm, and I said, I could quite happily sit here all day, every day, I love it, <laughs> so why deny yourself that potential opportunity, you've got something that you love to do, give it a go, Put yourself out a little bit because you never know what riches, what rewards you may get in the future. Because my involvement with Hastings Rock has certainly led on to lots of other things that I get, I've got involved with. I've been asked to get involved with another local station which is starting up uh, next year and do a local music show for that. And I've been told basically that show, that two hours a week, is my show. I do whatever I want with it, I'm sure, within reasons. I've got my, my own ideas for it as well already. Um, but isn't that great? You'll then produce, once again, it's your influence. You can do what you want with that, but once again, within reason. You produce it yourself. And there's nothing better in some ways than producing exactly what you want, <laughs> as long as it fits within the boundaries. So there you go, just a thought there. If you've got something you're interested in, something you're passionate about, you want to do more about it, it's only you that's holding you back. You sometimes need to put yourself forward, probably for no gain, probably for no pay, but just think about what might happen in the end. You never know, you know, that the world is your oyster type of thing, especially if you're a lot younger than, you, than I am. But even if you're not, I only started doing this six or seven years ago. There you go. You don't have to be 20 to do this. You can be in your 40s or whatever it might be. It's never too late and it's never too early. Anyway, Mr. John, I'll speak to you again soon. Goodbye.